All right, so linear inequality is what we're going to be looking at today at the top. You'll notice they give us a couple of inequalities. We got y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. We got 2x minus 3y is greater than 6. We got y is greater than 1 half x minus 5. And we also got x plus y is greater than or equal to 7. It says here that these expressions can be called linear inequalities in two variables. Why do we call those linear inequalities in two variables? Well, for a couple of reasons. Here's why we call those linear inequalities in two variables. First of all, linear, linear because each of these is either already in slope intercept form or we could rewrite it in slope intercept form. So that's where the linear part comes from. Because all of these are lines, they're linear. The inequality part of the statement is because rather than working with equal signs, now what we have is less than, or greater than, or less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. Those are called inequalities. So instead of equals, we have these inequality symbols. And I think it's pretty obvious why they call it two variables. Two variables because, because we're working with an x and a y. Those are the two variables in our inequalities. So again, we're calling this linear inequalities in two variables. It says all of these are linear. They can all be written in slope-intercept form. They all contain an inequality symbol rather than an equal sign. And each of these has two variables. They have an x and a y. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be graphing these linear inequalities in two variables. So right below there it says that graphs, these graphs of linear inequalities involve blank and blank. Blank and blank. What do they require here? They require a shaded region and a boundary line. And we'll talk about how to find that shaded region and how to find that boundary line here in a second. But when we get done graphing our linear inequalities, we'll have some shading and we'll also have a boundary line. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. How to graph. First of all, we're going to get all of these in slope-intercept form, which means we have to get y by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is solve for y. Now, remember, what must you do if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number? Talking about the second algebra. What's that? Okay, and we only need to do this when you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So we got to remember we are going to have to flip or reverse the inequality symbol. Anytime you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, we must flip the inequality symbol. But only if it's multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So I have to pause it. We gotta flip it if it's negative. So let's not forget that. All right, graphing the line. Use the blank and the blank. Use the slope and the y-intercept. Remember, we're gonna get all of these in slope-intercept form. So once we have it in slope-intercept form, we're gonna be taking a look at its slope and its y-intercept. The graph our line. However, this line that we get, we need to keep in mind that sometimes these lines that we get are going to be solid lines and sometimes they're going to be dotted lines. We need to make sure we know when to use which line. So it says here, use a solid line for what kind of inequality symbol? All right, very good. Bottom line is, you've got to contain the inequality symbol. So it's less than or equal to, and greater than, or equal to. This is when we're going to use the solid line. If we see one of those two symbols, that's when we use the solid line. So we have to have the equal sign. Which, of course, that means if it doesn't have an equal sign on the inequality symbol, then we're going to use the dotted. Dotted. And 
And we'll talk about what the difference is here in a minute. Why is one a solid? Why is one a dot? What's the difference? We'll talk about that here in a second. Keep in mind, we're also going to have some shading on these inequalities. So sometimes you're going to shade to one side of the line. Sometimes you'll have to shade to the other. So how do you determine what side to shade? Well, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. One of the methods is picking a side. Select a point. Select a point on one side of the line, the test, by plugging it into the original equation. Now, the suggestion here is use the order pair 0, 0. Usually, that's going to be the easiest point to plug in. 0, 0, the origin. And what's going to happen is if we get a true statement after plugging in that point, we're going to shade to that side. If we get a true statement, that's the side that we're going to shade to. So if I chose the order pair 0, 0, and I got a true statement in that inequality, that's the side that I would be shading. However, if it's a false statement, if it's false, then we're going to shade to the other side. Shade to the other side. Now, there is an alternative way that we can determine what side to shade, and I'll show you that. Some of you may prefer that method. Some of you may prefer this method. I'm going to show you both, and I'll let you decide which one you like better. But basically, this is the steps that we're going to go through to graph our inequality. Like I said, you guys have done this before, so this is not totally new to you guys. All right, so that pretty much takes us through the notes. Now we're going to take a look at some specific examples. You've got two examples down there at the bottom. We're going to take a look at those two examples. The first one, A. A, notice the form that that equation is written. What do we call that form when it's Y by itself? It's called slope-intercept form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this line, and I can start right now because I already know what uh, the slope is, and I know what the y-intercept is. So the first thing we're going to do is go and find the y-intercept, which in this case is going to be a positive 3. So I'm going to put a point here at positive 3. I also know the slope of this line, and the slope is negative 2. However, remember, we do identify slope as rise over run. So when I say negative 2, that's really negative 2 over 1. So what do I need to do here if I have a slope of negative 2 over 1? Go down 2 and over 1. So that's what I'm going to do for my y-intercept. I'm going to go down 2 and over 1. Now I need to make sure this line is extremely accurate, guys. So I want you to get more points than just those two. So we're going to continue with that pattern. We're going to go down 2 over 1 again. Go down 2 over 1. I want you to fill up your graph paper with as many points as you can fit on it. Because the more we have, the more accurate this line is going to be. Then I'm going to reverse it in the other direction. I'm going to go up 2, over 1. Up 2, over 1. Up 2, over 1. The more dots, the better. However, don't get in a hurry here. Be careful. Before you connect those dots, sometimes you need a solid line. Sometimes you need a dotted line. So be careful here. You'll notice the inequality has an equal sign. And because of that equal sign, which of the uh, lines do we need to use? The dotted one or the solid one? Solid. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and connect these dots with a solid line. So I'm halfway there. All I need to do now is figure out what side I'm going to be shading. So the way we're going to do this, and I'm going to show you two different ways, is first we're going to pick a point. And the point they suggested was the order pair 0, 0. That's at the origin here. So what I'm going to do is replace the x and y with a 0. So there it is. So I've replaced x and y with 0. And I'm going to see what I get here. Well, I know a negative 2 times 0 is 0. I also know that 0 plus 3 would be a 3. So if I look at that statement, is that statement true or is that statement false? Is 0 less than or equal to a 3? Is that true or false? Is 0 less than a 3? False. Or equal. Is it less than or is it equal? 
either one or the other. Is it one or the other? Oh, it's less than, right? So this is a true statement. And because we have a true statement, this is the side we're going to be shading. It's the side that has the order. So this is the side we're shading. And we're shading that side because we ended up with a true statement. Of course, if it was a false statement, rather than shading that side, we would shade to the other. So this is the graph of this inequality. So this is one way we can determine which side is shaped. And I'm going to show you another one here with B. However, before I can graph B, you'll notice right now it's in standard form. So what I'm going to do is convert that into slope intercept form. So there's going to be a little work required here, so I'm going to do my work All right down here and you find some room to do your work. So we're going to get this in slope intercept form, which shouldn't be too hard. There's only two things I need to do. And that first thing is move the 2x to the other side. We're going to subtract, which means now I'm going to end up with negative 3y is greater than negative 2x plus 6. What's that? Well, because look at this 6 over here. What kind of 6 is it? It's a positive 6. So that's why I'm using a plus 6. Had that been a negative 6, then I would put a minus 6. Okay. You do see where the uh, negative 2x comes from, right? Because we moved it to the other side. Okay. No, it's the same. It keeps the same sign. All right, so we're almost there. we got one more thing to do, and that's to divide everything by a negative 3. So we're going to divide everything by negative 3. So when I divide by negative 3, of course, all I have over here is a y. A negative divided by another negative is going to turn this into a positive 2 over 3. Now notice I'm going to leave it a fraction, guys, because this is slope. I need rise over run. So don't give me the decimal. Go ahead and leave it as a fraction. What about the 6 divided by the negative 3? 6 divided by negative 3 gives you a negative 2. Now notice I did not write down my inequality symbol. Why not? Yeah, because we're going to flip it. The reason we're flipping it is because we're dividing by a negative 3. Anytime I divide by a negative number, I need to flip my inequality symbol. So what I want you to do is box that in for me because this is what we're going to be graphing. That's the one we're graphing. So now that we know our slope and our y-intercept, let's use that to get its graph. Negative 2. Negative 2 is the y-intercept. So let's come over here. And that's where we're going to start at, negative 2. The slope on this line is 2 thirds, which means I'm going to rise 2 and run 3. Let's go ahead and do that, up 2 and then run 3. Continue with that pattern. Get as many dots as possible. Go up 2, over 3. Go up 2, over 3. You can get some more dots on this side by reversing the pattern, going down 2, 3 to the left. Down two, three to the left, down two, three to the left. But again, don't get in a hurry here, guys, especially if you're using a pen. Before you connect the dots, double check here. Are we going to use a solid or a dotted line? Dotted. dotted. So let's make sure that we use a dotted line. So there's our dotted line. All right, now I told you there was an alternative way to find where to shape. So what we can do rather than plugging in a curve is we can simply look at the inequality symbol. And I'm looking at this inequality symbol right here because that's what we're graphing. Right now that says less than. And you may have been told this back in algebra 1. If we have a greater than symbol, we shade to the top of the line. If we have a less than symbol, we shade to the bottom of the line. But right now I have a less than symbol, which means I'm going to be shading to the bottom of that line. So I would be shading this side right here. So that saves me some, a little bit of work. Rather than having to plug in a point such as 0, 0 and determine whether it's true or false, I can simply look at the inequality symbol. If it's less than, shade to the bottom. If it's greater than, shade to the top. So I'm giving you two options here. If you like putting in a point, we'll do that. 
If you like simply looking at the inequality, do that. But make sure if you're going to do this one over here, make sure you're looking at the inequality in slope-intercept form. Because notice we did flip it. Notice we're not looking at this one. We're looking at the one in slope-intercept form. All right, let's turn the page. We've got a couple more examples to look at. Number one, y is greater than 2x plus 4. It's already in slope-intercept form, so we can go ahead and start graphing it. 4 is our y-intercepts. 2 is our slope, so we're going to rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. I'm going to go ahead and reverse the pattern, going down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. The more points, the better. Before you connect the dots, just double check. Double check what kind of line you're going to use. In this case, we're going to use which one? The solid or the dotted one? Which one? Dotted. dotted. You can only use a solid if there's an equal sign. Alright, so there's the line. At this point, all I need is the shading. Right now, that inequality symbol is a greater than symbol. And because it's a greater than symbol, I should be shading to the Top. So I'm going to show you to the top bracket. Now I know a lot of times the problem with shading to the top and bottom is sometimes you're not sure what's the top and what's the bottom. It's not quite clear. So if you need to, you can always put T up here and B down here. What does the T stand for? Top. What does the B stand for? Uh, bottom. So everything of this side would be the top. Everything down here would be the bottom. So if you're not sure what's top and bottom, use the T on here. All right, so any questions on that first one? Number one, we're all good. By the way, what does all this shading mean anyway? Yeah, every point that's in that shaded area represents a solution to this inequality here. So there's actually lots and lots and lots and lots of answers to this here. And we can't possibly write every single order pair. So what we do is use the graph to show the solution. All right, let's go to number two. Notice number two is not in slope-intercept form, so let's go ahead and do a little work and get it in slope-intercept form. So there's what we're working with. Two easy steps to get into slope-intercept form. I'm going to start by subtracting my 3x. So now what I have is negative 5y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 15. What am I going to do next? Divide by negative 5. Make sure you divide everything by negative 5. Once again, a negative divided by another negative is going to make this a positive 3 fifths. And 15 divided by negative 5 makes that a negative 3. Do I need to flip the sign? Yes. The reason we're flipping the sign is because we're dividing by a negative 5. So this is what we're going to graph. That's what I'm looking at. So let's come over here and graph that. Negative 3. That's your y-intercept. That's your starting point. 3 over 5, that's your slope. We're going to rise 3, run 5. So we're going to go up 3 and over 5. Let's do it again. Go up 3 and then over 5. <coughs> Get a couple more points, doing the opposite. Go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do it again. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Once again, don't get in a hurry here. What kind of line do I need to use? The dotted one or the solid one? Solid. There's the solid line. All I need is the shading. I notice that I'm looking at a greater than symbol. Anytime I have a greater than symbol, I should be shading to the top. So I'm shading all of this area here. This is where all my solutions are. Lots and lots and lots of order here. So on that test that's coming up, I may give you an inequality like this, and I may ask you, is the ordered pair 
zero, zero a solution to this inequality here? Can I call zero, zero a solution? Yes. Why is zero, zero a solution? Because it's inside the shaded area. What about 10, negative 2? Could I call 10, negative 2 a solution? No. Why not? Because it's not in the shaded area. <coughs> what if I give you the ordered pair by 0? By 0. Can I count that as part of my solution? Yes. Why can I include it? Because it's right on top of the line. But more important, it's right on top of a solid line. What if that had been a dotted line? Can I still count it as part of the solution? No. So that's the difference between the solid and the dotted. If it falls on a solid line, yes, it's still part of the solution. But if it falls on top of a dotted line, well then no, it's not part of the solution. Yes, ma'am? You're always going to switch this up. Multiply or divide. Either one of those two things. Not a positive. No, not a positive. Let's take a look at number three. We're working with 3y is greater than negative 12. I want y by itself. All I'm going to do here is divide by 3. And a negative 12 divided by 3 would give us a negative 4. Do I need to flip the sign this time? No. No. Remember, I said if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number. What am I dividing by? I'm dividing by a positive 3. Yes, my answer is negative. I don't care about that. I'm worried about what I'm dividing by. In this case, it's a positive 3. So do not flip your inequality term. Alright, so here's what we're working with. Y is greater than negative 4. Now, we've already talked about this, guys. What kind of slope are we looking at there? Zero. And what is the line with a zero slope look like? It's a horizontal line. So that's what I'm going to draw up here. I'm going to draw me a horizontal line. However, I can't just put it anywhere I want. It's got to go through what number? Negative 4. So when I draw this, mine has to go through negative 4. Now, be careful. Before you draw it, before you draw that horizontal line, am I going to use a solid one or a dotted one? Dotted. So make sure you draw a dotted horizontal line. So that right there is for y is greater than negative 4. Of course, I've still got to do the shading part. And because it says greater than, we're going to be shading to the top. All of this part gets shaded. That's where all the solutions are. Everything to the top of that line. Here's one that's just the opposite. Here we got 4x is greater than or equal to negative 16. Just like number 3, we're going to start by dividing by 4. Negative 16 divided by 4 gives me a negative 4. Would I need to put the inequality symbol here? No. Did divide by a negative number, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, next thing I need is the graph. Now, this is just the opposite of the other. Instead of getting a horizontal line, this time we're going to get a vertical. We have an undefined slope here. But again, I can't just put the vertical line anywhere I want. I'm not going to make sure it goes through the negative 4. Now, when I say it's got to go through negative 4, this time I'm talking about the x intercept. So this line is going straight up and down here. By the way, what kind of line am I going to use? Solid. So go ahead and draw yourself a solid line. Solid line. Here we're going to run into a little situation. Because I've been telling you either shade to the top or you shade to the bottom. Do I have a top and bottom this time? No, all I have is a left side and a right side. But that's all right, because if you look at this inequality, what we're looking for are the x values that are greater, greater than, or equal to a negative 4. Which side are the x values greater than? Then a negative four. The one to the right or the one to the left? Right. To the right. That's the side that I'm going to be shaped. This is where my x values are greater than a negative four. Alright, any questions so far? We're all good.
Okay, we got one more thing to look at, and then I'm going to cut you loose here. On number five, number five, it says the gym, as long as our us charges a base fee of 20 bucks plus another $10 per hour, Angela's Garden Care uh, caters to the more affluent clientele and charges higher rates. So the first thing they want me to do is write an equation, write an equation for finding the charge using Jim's Lawns R Us. All right, so we're going to write an equation. So we're going to use Y to represent how much he charged, his total charge. How exactly do we find his total charge? Well, there's a couple of things here. First of all, he charges $20 base fee. No matter what. No matter how long he works, he's going to charge you 20 bucks. But on top of that 20 bucks, he's also going to charge you an extra $10 per hour. I'm going to let X represent the number of hours. So what I have here is the equation Y equals 20 plus 10X. Or I can also write that as Y equals 10X plus 20. We all agree that those two are the same thing, right? So either way would be fine. They mean the same thing. Part B says for us to write an inequality. Write an inequality describing the cost of Angela's garden care. Now what did it tell us about Angela's garden care? It costs more. So whatever he's charging, she's charging more. So whatever Y is, what do we know about Y? It's always going to be more. Greater than, greater than what? Either one of these. I'm going to go ahead and use the 10x plus 20. So there's our inequality. Finally, step C here says sketch a graph shading the region where Angela's Garden Care prices would be found. All right, so let's go ahead and graph y is greater than 10x plus 20. 20 is our y intercept. So let's come over here and find 20. That's our y intercept. There it is. The slope on this thing is 10, 10 over 1. Now notice what they're counting by over here. They're not counting by 1. So what are they counting by? 10. So I'm actually going up 10 and then over 1. So that's up 10 over 1. That's because they're counting by 10. Let's continue that pattern. Up 10 over 1. Up 10 over 1. Up 10 over 1. Before you connect the dots, be careful. What kind of line are we going to use here? Got it. Got it. And finally, all we need is the shading. Remember, she's charging more. It's greater than. So where are we going to shade? Up or to the top. So all of this area is where we're going to find her cost. Her cost is always going to be more than Jim's Long R.S. All right, we got any questions about any of these any plots? I know you guys have seen this before. This is not you, it's kind of just refreshing your memory. All right, so you got a couple to do, uh, do on your own here. So let's go ahead and finish that up. Once you finish that, if you still haven't finished up any of the other assignments, you can go, uh, go ahead and work on those as well. If you need any help, let me know so I can go and help you out. Thank you.